Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. The General Hospital spoilers preview video for the week of September 2nd to 6th says that Agent John Jacker Kate's death will send shockwaves as an inquiry begins on the Quartermain property. Michael Corinthos may be compelled to cover for Sonny Corinthos, and he won't be alone. Sonny will also ask Carly Spencer for a favor, which will put her in an uncomfortable place. If anybody asks, we've been up here for the last half hour, Sonny tells a perplexed Carly in the preview footage. Of course, this means Sonny will pressure Carly to be his alibi and would involve her in his murder cover-up. Sonny can't deny that John was shot, but he'll try his best to cover his involvement in the crime with Carly's help. However, Anna Devane was not born yesterday, and she is likely to assume Sonny killed Agent Cates in order to stop harassing Christina Corinthos Davis. Harrison Chase will undoubtedly have his own suspicions when he questions everyone at the Quartermain estate. All eyes will be on the mob boss with a clear motive, but Carly may believe Sonny was with her when Cates was slain. Jocelyn Jacks will be furious with Carly when she discovers her mother allowed Sonny pull her into more illicit activities that could come back to haunt her. In Africa, Lucky Spencer's poker game with Sidwell will take an unexpected turn when Holly Sutton makes her long-awaited return. Hello, darling, Holly joyfully says in GH's weekly ad, leaving Lucky caught off guard by her appearance. Holly will play an interesting role in this exciting plot, and our predictions suggest that she could be the reason Lucky is able to escape this mess alive. According to General Hospital teasers, Holly's return will be full of surprises, so stay tuned for more stunning news. General Hospital spoilers show that fans are still suffering from the news that Kelly Monaco has left the ABC series. Many fans are fighting back in hopes of protecting Monaco's job, but there are no assurances at this time. We must examine the likelihood that Sam will be removed from the show and how this would affect the canvas. GH Insiders had predicted Sam's death, which makes everything worse. If Sam's fate is actually dire, her loved ones will be devastated, but for the time being, we'd want to focus on Jason Morgan's reaction. Jason isn't known for displaying extreme emotions, but when confronted with a shattering scenario, we can all see the pain in his eyes. You can guarantee Jason will be distraught if he has to say goodbye to Sam permanently. For starters, Jason will find it difficult to contemplate about parenting Danny Morgan alone. Jason will have a difficult time dealing with Danny's grief. Of course, Jason will have to mourn the loss as well, which will have a significant impact on him if this tragic plot unfolds as planned. Jason's life may be irreparably altered if he loses Sam, who is considered his genuine love. Jason adores Carly Spencer, but their connection is unique. Part of Jason may still be waiting for a reunion with Sam, which may never happen if Sam dies. It will be interesting to see how Jason handles that hard truth down the future. If Sam dies, Jason's heart may turn stone cold. There may be another love interest who can warm it back up sooner or later, but Jason will undoubtedly experience anguish and rage if Sam does not survive what lies ahead. According to General Hospital spoilers, Sam's terrible ending will shock up Port Charles, so stay tuned for more details and tears. After finishing last week with a literal boom, General Hospital is set to pull out all the brakes as Sonny races to conceal his tracks, and his actions have far-reaching ramifications for two families. Meanwhile, the question of who is holding Lucky captive seems to be addressed in the most shocking way possible. Expect excitement to begin immediately as the aftermath of Kate's shooting unfolds. While we all witnessed Sonny pull the trigger, twice. That doesn't guarantee the inquiry into Jagger's death will go smoothly. That will be especially true if Carly gives her favorite ex an alibi, as Sonny has requested. If she agrees, might this be the catalyst for their eventual reunion? Despite Sonny's efforts to avoid paying for his crime, it appears that the soap will play a reverse mystery. Because, while we, the viewer, know who pulled the bullet, there were many others in Port Charles who wanted Kate's dead. That means the upcoming events will be less of a whodunit and more of a who'll wind up being accused of it? Christina clearly had both motive and means, as she stole one of her father's weapons. How many of those stuff does the person have lying around? But Mom Alexis was heard openly threatening Kate's, at the police station, no less, so it appears she, too, may be caught up in the brewing chaos. 
Meanwhile, as people in Port Charles struggle to unravel one mystery, another unfolds further away, leaving us wondering who is taking Lucky prisoner and why. The only individual who could have answered that question was hit by the car transporting Ava to her death. But if you pay attention to the promo below, you'll notice, or rather hear, something very telling. Have you heard it? That familiar voice says, Hello, darling. Combine that sound bite with the fact that Emma Sams will return as Holly Sutton this week, and the math sort of does itself, doesn't it? As pleased as we are to have Holly return, we have to ask why she is holding Lucky prisoner. Wondering whether he'll be able to go home in time to help save his dying sister, Lulu. For more on what to anticipate this week, check out the most recent General Hospital spoilers, which reveal that Ava will receive some unexpected assistance, Christina will turn to a family member, and Jason will do what he does best. Rick is back in Port Charles, and better than ever. Maybe not better, but he did return to General Hospital to help his daughter, Molly, which is a good thing, right? And while he's in town, why not reunite with a few people? Consider Alexis, Carly, and Liz. According to previews, Rick and Liz will have their first meaningful contact today since their previous catastrophic attempt at a romance. Remember when he brought Hayden to town to pretend to be Drew's wife, when everyone thought he was an amnesiac Jason, in order to keep the twin away from Liz? We suppose it wasn't the worst thing he'd done, but it was certainly one of the more devious methods to get back into Liz's heart. Now, now he's back. Rick seemed to be thinking that bygones are just that. Rick Hurst tells Soap Opera Digest in an interview that he is well aware that his actions and thirst for power have caused a lot of collateral damage over the years. However, Hurst maintains, Elizabeth has always been that one person who, for the most part, he never wanted to be that collateral damage. But he understands how much collateral harm he has inflicted on her and their relationship. She's the one that got away. She is the one person with whom he has never been able to reconcile himself. This was you, you killed this. And he murdered something that was genuinely beneficial in his life. It's been more than 20 years since the couple first met and married. A lot has occurred to both of them. But, despite everything, Hurst says, the feelings stay there, the genuine nature of who the two of them were at the beginning of their relationship has never left. Dante believes she is accusing him of something, and, contrary to popular belief, he did not abandon Lulu. He accuses her of sounding like Tracy and failing to show genuine concern for him and Lulu. He pays Brooke Lynn to break them up in front of her. Carly can't believe he's bringing it up again, she thought they'd moved on years ago. He snaps that it takes a particular sort of person to sledgehammer someone else's life, and she has no concept what that means for Brooke Lynn. Brooke Lynn happened to be listening in. Portia, Curtis, Michael, and Willow all attend Drew's political gathering in the park. Drew praises Congressman McConkie, the mayor, and Willow for being his strongest supporters. He also thanked his business partner and nephew, Michael. Michael asks Willow where McConkie is, as he was meant to be here. Portia moves aside to check on Heather's labs. Curtis interrupts her phone call and inquires as to why she is checking on Heather. Heather was hospitalized last night, according to Portia, and she has hired a new lawyer. Rick Lansing is a person they know. She has no idea what transpired with Scott, and he simply passed the matter off to Rick. She claims to have researched Rick and discovered that he is an excellent lawyer with a winning track record. After the rally, Michael congratulates Drew before leaving to accompany Monica to her latest routine doctor appointment. Willow and Drew are left alone together. Willow praises Drew for his comments about her, and he claims she was the one who helped him understand how much he wanted to run. Willow inquires about the congressman, and Drew is expecting him and hopes nothing is wrong. Drew approaches Curtis and Portia to thank them for coming and supporting him. He also appreciates Curtis for his efforts at Aurora. Curtis acknowledges he's enjoying it, and Drew believes that's evident given what he's done. Later, Willow discovers Drew on his own. He's plainly agitated, and she wants to know what's wrong. He just got off the phone with McConkie's wife and died this morning. Willow apologizes. Drew is emotional and wants to discuss somewhere else, so they leave. As the rally winds down, Curtis and Portia locate a park seat to relax and talk, and Portia can tell he enjoys his job at Aurora. 
She is happy, and he is happy, despite having so little spare time together these days. He thinks she's unhappy. Portia enjoys her job, but the Heather days get to her. Curtis then receives news that McConkie has died. He tries calling Drew, but it goes to voicemail. Portia believes Drew's schedule will be pushed forward, and she assumes he'll ask Curtis to take over as CEO of Aurora. This implies extra work for Curtis. Willow and Drew return to his office, and he relates what Hazel McConkie told him about her husband's death, which was rapid and unexpected. She inquires about the current situation. He expects Hazel will issue a statement regarding his death, and there may be a special election. He may be traveling to Washington, D.C. earlier than scheduled. Drew recalls the last time he spoke with McConkie, who was going on and on about his plans to take his grandchildren fishing. He realizes this is the big family meal, so she should start going. Willow inquires if he is not going. He doesn't feel like it and prefers to stay here. Willow refuses to let him alone because she sees how hard this is affecting him. Dante finds Tracy sitting in the chapel and asks if he can join her. Tracy wonders what she owes this visit to. He just wanted to spend some time with her and thank her for being here for Lulu. He knows she has always held a special place in Lulu's heart, and she has often stood up for her. He gives Tracy credit for who she has become. Tracy yells, she became a person I don't recognize. Dante claims Lulu is the same person she was before she lapsed into a coma. Tracy asks what he recalls of Lulu before the disaster when they first met. He admits she could be trouble, and she took chances and kicked ass. Tracy claims she suddenly became cautious and hesitant. She screams because Lulu had spirit and determination, which he took away from her. Dante claims that he had PTSD and was unwell. Tracy claims he got treatment, which was beneficial, but he also slept with her cousin and turned down Lulu's aid and love. Tracy claims he destroyed Lulu's self-esteem, and if she dies without rediscovering the spark she once had, she would never forgive him. Dante can live without her forgiveness and claims she can keep it for herself. Dante brings up Luke and how, before his death, he most likely remembered all of Tracy's pledges to take after Lulu as his life flashed before his eyes. Tracy pledged to get Lulu the best therapy she could. Unfortunately, Lulu has nothing to show for it. Dante and Tracy calm down. Dante admits she is correct. Lulu warned him about leaving, but he was more concerned about what might happen if he stayed. He knows walking away was wrong, and she is fading away, with nothing he can do to stop it. Tracy sticks by her words, although she should use better timing, as bashing him up now achieves nothing. Dante understands that she has little need for him, but she is vital to Lulu, and hence to him. He knows she helped Lulu through many difficult times, and Lulu needs her now more than ever. Tracy exclaims, she needs both of us. Dex goes to the Metro Court. He sits in the alcove, looks at his phone, and appears undecided about calling his mother. Later, Joss arrives to surprise him. He wasn't certain he'd see her tonight. Joss explains that it was too late to see Lulu and nothing could be done, so her mother told her to go enjoy her life. He understands how difficult it is to let go of worry. Joss believes there is a chance Lulu will be fine, but things may go wrong. He says they have to pray that everything goes right. Nicholas is released from Flatland Prison to visit his mother. They're both in tears. They sat down, and he inquires about Ace. Laura sends him images and updates on how he is doing. Given the timing of this unexpected visit, he suspects something is wrong. Laura claims they have a problem with Lulu and she needs him. Nicholas has blood drawn and they await the findings, which should arrive within an hour. Nicholas recalls the first time he saw Lulu when she was unwell. He still has a mark on his back from bone marrow extraction. She recalls how he stood beside Lulu, a terrified toddler. Nicholas reflects on how he pledged to be there for his boys in the same way, yet failed them. He worries if he'll ever get the opportunity to atone. Laura insists he'll get that chance now. She promises he'll serve his sentence, save his sister, and return home to them. Laura is surprised when the lab technician returns with the results of the test. Nicholas can't assist Lulu. 
His liver functionality does not fulfill Lulu's requirements. Nicholas does not comprehend, he is healthy and does not drink. She claims his liver is fine for him, but not for Lulu. Nicholas says it will be fine. He reminds her that Lulu has other relatives, and he instructs his mother to find and bring Lucky home. Laura and Liz are sitting in Portia's office together. Portia and another doctor diagnose Lulu with medical cirrhosis of the liver. Her liver failure was most likely caused by the drug she had been taking for the past four years. Laura believes they can adjust the meds, but the physicians say it is not that simple. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.